Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And honestly, if you're thinking about giving up on Amazon selling because it's been hard or it's been really confusing or overwhelming, maybe you don't know what direction you're going in. Maybe you're thinking about starting an Amazon business and you still just are overwhelmed with all the wealth of information that's out there. Maybe you've binge watched YouTube videos, listened to a lot of podcasts, and you're just plain stuck. You really need to hear this message. Now, who the heck am I and why should you take advice from me? For those of you guys who are unfamiliar with Mommy Income, with the Amazon Files, or with me, Kristen Ostrander, I'm going to give you a brief overview of um, who I am and why I'm qualified to talk to you about these things. And also you can have the full story by going to the Amazon Files episode number one. 45 and that is the one where you can listen to my entire story from beginning to end and how I ended up where I am today. So for the full version, go to episode number 145, the key to success, and you will find my full story there. But here is who I am. I am a stay-at-home mom with three children. I have 17 years of e-commerce experience starting on eBay 2003 and adding Amazon in 2008, and I haven't looked back since. I've generated over $5 million in revenue in, on Amazon the past five years with a profit margin of 70... <laughs> 70. Uh -huh. That's funny. 27% profit or more over the past five years. Our profit margins are great. Our revenue is great. And I've taught thousands of people to do the same. Over the past six years, I've taught people how to start and grow businesses through in-person workshops, through online training courses, YouTube videos, podcasts, books, and conferences. And I am ready to share with you the benefits for selling on Amazon. I know in 2020, there's a lot of people wondering, Wondering if Amazon's still going to be viable with all the lawsuits that Amazon's going for, COVID-19, coronavirus issues, all these things, is Amazon still a good idea? Is it still a viable business model? And also, if you're frustrated, if you're running into roadblocks, all these different things, what can you actually do about that? So I'm going to help you, but I want to first tell you things that, that I don't do here at the Amazon Files at Mommy Income. There are certain things that I will never do. And so, you know, if this is something you're looking for, maybe it's time to listen to someone else, click exit off this video, leave, whatever you need to do. What I don't do, I don't cut corners. This is a business and a business deserves all of your attention. It does, well, not all of it, but it deserves attention. It deserves, um, there's legalities, there's rules you need to follow, there's policies, there's finances involved. I don't cut corners. There is no shortcut to success. You don't take the elevator. You've got to take lots of flights of stairs to get to where you are. Also, I don't promise quick and easy money. If you're looking for quick and easy money, this is not for you. Can you make money pretty quickly when you start the process of selling on Amazon? Yes, you can. But this is not a quick and easy get rich quick scheme. So if you're looking for something like that, this is not for you. I also do not promote black hat rule skirting tactics. Amazon don't play. They will kick you off in a hot second if you don't apply their rules and their policies. Now, some of them are annoying, some of them are complicated. Yes, Amazon tends to put policies out there and so many people aren't following them, yet we're afraid because we wanna you know, do the things they're doing, but we don't wanna get in trouble. The best practice is just to follow the rules. If you hear somebody, telling you to do something that's like, eh, well, Amazon says not to, but we've been getting away with it. Be, be very wary of that. Uh, also, I will not tell you, now this is, you know, there's going to be some, you know, caveats to this, but I will not tell you that this is passive income. So yes, I make my money and I make sales all, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week while I'm on vacation and while I sleep. But that is not the definition of passive income. You know why? Because the tons of work that I put in first to in order to make that money is not considered passive. And if I do nothing, it will not continue. So I will be passive until I sell out of inventory and then what? So I work every day to ensure that my business is running smoothly. Another thing I will not tell you and I will not do is promise you that this is going to be an automated business. If anyone tells you that you can put Amazon on autopilot, they're lying. And if they do, 
they're using a ton of people to do all the work for them and their their personal profit is very very thin so you need to keep in mind that that's something that you need to pay attention to there are many many ways to automate amazon businesses by hiring help by using software and tools and things like that however you will never put it on autopilot there are just way too many um, moving parts and pieces in an amazon business for someone to tell you that you can fully automate it so if they're saying that to you you know, you better, you better dig in first before you even spend a dollar with them to make sure that, that they have a proven system that can make you money. And it's going to take setup and it's going to take time. Another thing I do not do and will not talk about is drop shipping. Drop shipping is against Amazon's terms of service unless you have all of the inventory on hand and ready to ship right now. If you don't have that, you're not drop shipping. So don't, don't even think about it. I will not talk about that. I also will not, last and final thing I will not do is promote creating your own private label products for beginners. If you've never sold on Amazon before, you should not be creating um, private label products, investing in products to create and bring to the Amazon marketplace. To be honest, you have no idea what you're doing. So if you have no idea what you're doing, you shouldn't start with very expensive, time-consuming, long-term private label. That's reserved for the top of the food chain once you've tried a couple other ways to sell products on Amazon, to bring uh, products to the marketplace, to learn how to label and ship and run your Amazon account before you start going there. I've seen so many people lose thousands of dollars following a method or a process that says you have to look at all the top best sellers on Amazon and then go to... Alibaba and create your own and try to bust into the marketplace and all that. Oh, I've heard horror stories, you guys. People lose thousands because they just think, oh, if I just do this, this one product will be my ticket to retirement or riches or anything else. And it's simply not the case. It just doesn't happen the way everyone says it happens. So I just want you to be aware of that. I'm not against private label. I know it works. It works for um, many, many people, but there is a rhyme, a reason, a process, expenses, and time that go into all that. And it's not, you don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket. You do not want to invest thousands of dollars into a business when you've never even tried it. There is a cheap, fast, easy way to try selling on Amazon. And you can go to startfbatoday.com to get our $97 beginner course and you can begin selling on Amazon literally tomorrow after you get your account verification and everything else and you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars doing that. That's not a long-term way to, to, to continue sustaining business, but it's a good way to get started. So what I will do for you is give you solid, truthful, up-to-date information about selling on Amazon. I am an active Amazon seller and I have been for over 11 years. I've been in e-commerce for 17 plus years on Amazon for 11, actively selling the entire time still to this day. I will lead you to a long-term sustainable business model, but also give you ways to get started on the cheap, to get started on a shoestring budget, or to just Get your feet wet to see if this is even right for you. There's multiple ways you can do business on Amazon. Some of them are just quick and easy to get started. The other things are going to be more long-term and sustainable, which is gonna cost a little bit more money and a little bit more time, but give you tons more protection to protect your business against all those crazy things out there. Another thing I will do is tell you what has worked for me and what has worked for all of my students in currently and in the past so that you can make the best decision that's right for you. You know, Amazon's not for everyone and certain business models aren't for everyone, but the key to it is consistency and time and making sure that you're doing what's right and keeping your goals in mind. What is your goal? Is it to retire from that nine to five? Is it just to make a little side hustle cash? What is your goal of starting and running an Amazon business? Because that is going to be your key to what you're doing on Amazon. And this episode is really just a reminder of all of the benefits and the easiest way to really get started with Amazon. There, yes, Amazon, I will tell you this right now, Amazon can give you a lot of headaches. They change things often. You're playing on their playground, so you have to follow all of their rules. You have to do all of these things the way that they want you to. And honestly, it's really can be a pain sometimes. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes I pull my hair out, roll my eyes, throw things, get mad because Amazon again has changed another something that's very frustrating for us sellers. However, I'm still selling on Amazon. I'm adapting to the changes and following the rules. Why? Because I can't see making this kind of income 
anywhere else on the planet right now. It's, that's just the truth. Go back again to, number, to episode number 145 and learn my story. I'll tell you here, I'm a college dropout. Okay, I don't have a college degree and the only job that I ever had before selling online was being a waitress and a babysitter. That's it. I don't have an MBA, I don't have a business license, I don't have any of that stuff. I just learned how to sell online, I learned to sell what, what's working and I kept being consistent and persistent. So I love selling on Amazon, number one, because of that income, um, I've seen my income double, triple, quadruple over years and years and years, working from home, automating my business, still spending tons of time with my kids and with my family and doing things I love to do. Was it easy? No, I'm not gonna promise you it was easy. A lot of late nights, a lot of early mornings, a lot of frustration, lots of reset, start over, let's figure this thing out because this isn't working, all the different things uh, that any business brings. But honestly, the income, there's no ceiling. The more I can sell, the better I get good at this, the more and more I can earn for my family. And I don't have to do it on someone else's time. I don't have to do it in someone else's cubicle. I don't have to expose myself to tons of people in an office building. You know, any of you guys that are still worried about COVID or coronaviruses or just that in general, you can work from home and any hours that you choose, but you will do the work. You will have to work. This is not, there's no free. You're not entitled to anything. You get to earn everything you have. That's why I love it. So I'm going to give you some benefits to selling on Amazon to encourage you, to remind you, or to help you motivate you to start or keep going. Because I know I've gotten lots of emails, especially during this pandemic. I've gotten lots of emails, I've gotten lots of messages, I've gotten lots of things from people discouraged, um, just fighting with Amazon on GTI and exemptions and UPC codes and brand registries and trademarks and um, you know listings being blocked and you know restrictions, IP claims. Yeah, there's lots of headaches with some of this stuff, I get it. But staying motivated and staying focused on what you really truly want and is what you're doing going to get you there. So that's something you have to remember. So this is, if you're new and you're not sure about selling on Amazon, this is gonna be excellent to listen to, to know um, what the major benefits are, what you have to do, what you don't have to do. There are some of you right now doing MLMs or you're doing um, multi-level marketing and you're maybe burned out by that. You're tired of constantly being on social media and you're tired of constantly you know, changing your business model and doing this and that and jumping from this product to that product to try to keep it working. I get it. I understand understand what that um, I I've never done MLMs before because it never personally appealed to me but I know that some of you have been in that or are in that right now that might be struggling or you're just thinking I just want something different I am so tired of this what I love about selling on Amazon is that you do not have to do any personal marketing you do not have to have your own website you do not have to drive traffic to all of your new products or your bundles or your listings. You don't have to do that. Amazon builds that in for you. Amazon drives all the traffic. 86% as of 2019, um, end of 2019, 86% of US households are Amazon Prime members. That means you have access to 86 percent of households by selling on Amazon. No matter what product you sell, you have access to all those customers. If you have a store, a local store, how many customers do you really have access to? People that drive by, people that see your advertisements, people that are local around, but are you gonna bring global attention to your products for your brick and mortar store? No. Are you gonna bring global attention to your own .com, your own website, not without a ton of advertising and a ton of marketing and a ton of things like that, but Amazon reaches the globe every single minute of the day. So if you have a product on Amazon that people want, that's the first thing they're gonna check. So you have access to that. There's also no home parties, right? If you're an introvert, if you're somebody who's, who's or, or you just don't like selling or you don't wanna sell things to people, but you wanna make a side income, you wanna make some money online, but you don't want to have to deal with those kinds of things, there are better choices for you. You can sell on Amazon and never have a social media account, never have to run an ad on Facebook, never have to be an influencer. You don't have to make YouTube videos like I make. You don't have to do that. You can literally sit in the comfort of your own home, sell on Amazon, and never once even tell anybody about it if you don't want to. 
You don't have to be out in the open about it. You do not have to advertise your listings like that. You do not have to do those things. No sales calls, no clients to follow up with, no wondering where your next paycheck's gonna come from because you, you know, you drop two or three clients. This is so um, viable right now, especially during the pandemic. Amazon sales have tripled for most of the third party sellers I've spoken to over the pandemic because everyone was kind of forced to shop online. No one wanted to go to stores. There was quarantines, there's lockdowns, there's things like that. So people are turning to online uh, retail establishments, namely Amazon, to be able to buy products. That is great news for people like us. Another benefit, no manufacturing. You do not have to. And I repeat this for those of you who have heard this before someplace else, you do not have to manufacture your own item, import it from China or other places, or even have it manufactured in the United States in order to make good money selling on Amazon. You can sell products that already exist. You can make product bundles. And if you choose, you can make your own white label or private label product. Maybe you have an Etsy store and you already make things. You can then add them to Amazon. That is something that you can do. They have a custom made and handmade section on Amazon that you can sell on, but you can also create regular listings for your Amazon stuff, your stuff that you're selling. So you don't have to do that. Another thing that's amazing about Amazon and selling on Amazon is freedom of location. So freedom of location means right now, currently, as my business is set up, I can work from anywhere in the world, and as long as I have a great Wi-Fi connection, I have my laptop, I can work from anywhere in the world and get products listed on Amazon, sold on Amazon, because Amazon FBA ships out all of your items for you, and because we use a prep facility, we have our, our vendors send things to Amazon, or send things to our prep center, they prepare it for us and send it to Amazon. We do not have to stock, store, or ship inventory from our home. We do not own a warehouse. We do not own any sort of real estate processing, inf all this stuff. We, we have it all outsourced. And you can do that for a reasonable cost and then you can go anywhere in the world. You wanna go to Tahiti? Hey, you can run your Amazon business from there. If you have a strong Wi-Fi connection, you're not connected to the internet. <laughs> you know, you're not living off the grid here and trying to do that unless you have Wi-Fi. So just think about that here. Uh, also, you have world, uh, we already touched on this, worldwide visibility of your products. So if you're thinking about quitting, if you're thinking about, gosh, this is hard, I've been, maybe some of you out there have been doing this for over a year, maybe two years, maybe you're just stuck in the struggle and you're not exactly sure what's going wrong, you're burned out, maybe you're frustrated. If you still feel like this is viable for you and you want that extra help, I'm here to help you. Go to mommyincome.com slash coach or coaching, and I can help you um, troubleshoot some of the stuff you're going through. Here's the reason. What else are you going to do? What are you going to turn to that can be like this, that can be similar to this? Remember we talked about having clients or customers. If that's a way that you want to go and you want to build a service-based business, you're going to be trading your dollars for hours and however many clients you can get. And if, you know, just different things. That's a great business model if you really love what you're doing. But if you're just frustrated with Amazon and you're just like, I'm going to abandon this and do something else, um, I wonder what you're going to turn to. Let's have a conversation about that before you give up or give in. And maybe you're just done and that's totally okay too. But if you really think it's going to work, but you're stuck in a cycle, I can totally help you. So what about no storage of inventory? So people with eBay stores, Etsy stores, things like that, you might love what you do, but you still have to pack and ship every single item that comes in. If you have 100 orders a day, you have to pack and ship 100 orders a day. If you have five orders a day, same thing. What about 1,000? You ever processed 1,000 orders in one day? Is that even possible for one person to do? No inventory storage. No individual shipping of products. These are just some of the benefits of Amazon. Now you can merchant fulfill your items to where if somebody orders from you and you have stock, you know, on yourselves at your home or your location, wherever you are, you could choose to pick and pack and ship those. That's an option for you, a merchant fulfilled type business on Amazon. 
That's great for brick and mortar stores who have an open store, but also want to offer their products um, to a worldwide audience. You can offer them merchant fulfilled. And if somebody orders, you can pick off of your shelf and ship it to the customer. And you just have one less piece of inventory in your store. A lot of brick and mortar stores are turning to do that. And that's great too, but you don't have to do that. You can send it all into fulfillment by Amazon warehouses, FBA, and they will process all those orders for you. Also the automatic traffic. I cannot tell you how often this comes up with people who have their own websites and they're suffering with traffic and they're spending so much money on advertising, trying to get people to come look at their website and things like that. If you're selling products, you should have an Amazon presence. Most people search there first. And if they don't find what they're looking for, or they're not concerned about this or that, then they will start shopping small. Another thing, Remember that everything you buy on Amazon, you are supporting small businesses like mine and like all the other third-party sellers out there. That is a really great thing that you're doing. So keep that up. And there's also another benefit very little customer service. I won't say that there's no customer service because occasionally you get questions from people you want to answer about your products or about what you do, but the, the return policy, Amazon accepts your returns, decides whether they're sellable or not, puts them back on the shelf or puts them in uh, unfulfillable mode. You can have them shipped back to you or destroyed, whatever you want to do, but you're not dealing with back-to-back -back customers. You're not processing your own payments. You're not using PayPal. You don't have to worry about that. It's all inside Amazon's internal service. It's automatic. You don't have to worry about somebody's credit card failing and then going back to them. You don't have to worry about undeliverable uh, addresses. You don't have to worry about uh, products that weren't delivered. Amazon takes full responsibility for their fulfillment. So if somebody doesn't get their package, Amazon deals with it. You don't have to. So every day there's returns, you know, returns come in. That's the natural part of doing retail business. Whether it's online or regular, you're going to have customer returns. But you don't have to personally handle all of those things. Occasionally you have to deal with a feedback issue or answer a few questions, things like that. But for the most part, you're not processing returns. You're not sending numbers. You're not doing all that. You don't have to. Ability to sell multiple products and multiple categories. This is what I love also about Amazon is that you don't have to stick to one type of product line. It's important to niche so that you can get really good at selling a specific category of products, but you don't have to. The thing is you can sell baby items, grocery items, um, clothing, auto parts, lawn and garden, kitchen, home goods, whatever you want to, all in the same Amazon account. And it does not matter because when people go to Amazon and they type in, you know, um, like pot holders or something like that, you can, you, your listing will pop up. It's not necessarily your particular store. So some, you know, most stores around here, unless you're a big general store, if you're like Walmart and you sell just about anything, most people are very specific. They're niche style stores. So if you have a small boutique, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense for you to have a section of auto parts. If you're selling children's clothing, the great thing about Amazon is you can sell whatever you want. I mean, within reason, you know, they have some restrictions of categories and brands, but you can sell or apply to sell whatever it is that you want on Amazon. Many, many categories are open. Um, explore a new category if you're bored, if you're frustrated, if you're overwhelmed with some of these things. You can mix and match different types of business models. So you can use Merchant Fulfill as well as FBA. You can sell straight up wholesale and you can create wholesale bundles. You can sell your own private label products and wholesale. You can mix and match all these things. You can even open up a Merch by Amazon account when they decide to let new people in and design t-shirts and pop sockets and sweatshirts and things like that. Sell those on Amazon. There's a lot of different ways. Uh, you can sell custom made items. You can make handmade items. There's so many different things that you can sell on Amazon. And I think it's really important for everyone to really think about that as well. Amazon, as much as a lot of people think it's this, that Jeff Bezos is like the big bad wolf or, or, you know, Amazon as a whole is, you know, just a terrible company and all this stuff. Um, there's definitely hiccups in every company. There's frustrations with every business, but I, love what I'm doing on Amazon, despite all the funky rules and instant changes and things that they make, because 
I don't see any other opportunity out there right now that can make me the kind of money that I'm bringing into my household in profit 27% or more. We have never dipped below a 27% profit margin since we started on Amazon, even when we were first beginning. The profit margin in the beginning was actually higher because we were start, we started with selling used books and we were picking up for a dollar or two here and selling them on Amazon for 10, 20, 30, $50. Textbooks go for even more. It, it's been an amazing thing. And then you go up to maybe it's retail arbitrage you try. And uh, I don't really suggest that. It's a good way to get started to kind of get your feet wet for a very short period of time. But retail arbitrage carries a lot of risks involved with your business. And I don't suggest it in the long game. You can do it at the beginning to get started, but then you need to really pay attention to um, how to protect your business. And one of the ways is to get away from retail arbitrage and get into legitimate wholesaling or private labeling or things like that, that will um, ensure your business is not ripped out from under you because someone tells you to stop selling their product and you don't have authorization. So, or you can't, you're, someone claims you sold a counterfeit something and you have no way to prove it because your cash register receipt is not a legitimate form of purchase for Amazon. So just think about that. So I'm just here to encourage you to remind you of these things, remind you of the benefits that you have as an Amazon seller. So whether you're frustrated, whether you're overwhelmed, whether you're stuck in the thick of things and you're just like ready to give up, ready to pull your hair out and don't know what to do next or how to do it, I'm here for you. I've been doing this a really long time and I'm really here to help you take that next step forward. It doesn't have to be a big step. You just need some direction. So how do you get started? What's the best way? What's the best business model? Maybe I've tried it all. I've tried merch by Amazon. I have published my own book on KDP. I have done thrifting, books, online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, private labeling, and wholesale and wholesale bundles. These are all the different business models I've tried on Amazon. And I know all about the different ways those things can benefit and they can also hurt you. There are pros and cons to all. Books are a great way to get started. If you could, you know, if you're, if they're abundant and most of the time books are abundant, getting started on Amazon, books are usually cheap an easy way to send them into Amazon without spending a ton of money to learn the process. They're cheap to buy and sell and find. Um, the profit margins or the, the profit you'll get on those aren't huge depending on what books they are. There's lots of books that bring in big money. But there is, you know, it's just, it's not long-term sustainable driving around everywhere trying to find and source all these books all the time because they're one and done things. You buy one book at a yard sale or library book sale or whatever, and then you're selling one book at a time, and then it's one and done. How well, The chances of you finding the exact same book and selling it all over again and revamping that listing, again, is um, another thing. So encourage people to start there, but then move on quickly um, to other things, something that you can replenish and keep sending in over and over. So you only have to do the work one time. You don't have to continually go out, same with, they, with retail arbitrage. You don't have to continually go out into the universe and source your products, bring them in, process them, ship them to Amazon, and then come back and do it all over again week after week. When you're doing something like wholesale or private label or even wholesale bundles, uh, the best, and I'll tell you why in a minute, um, but you don't have to do those things over and over again. You can just start reordering the same products from companies, and then you can automate that too by hiring someone else to do that for you and you know, putting some auto shipments on when you're, when you're ordering things, so thinking about that. Private label. Private label has been said to be the top of the Amazon food chain when you are literally inventing or tweaking an existing product, you are having it personally manufactured, custom made, whatever it is for you, your brand, you're putting your own brand on it, your own name, and you're selling it to the masses. That is going to require some marketing. That's going to require some of that because you've got to be able to get your product seen. Amazon's a great place to do that, but occasionally if it's a brand new product no one has ever heard of, there, there there's not a lot of demand for it. So you have to tell people how awesome your item is, blah, blah, blah. So that's going to, that comes with a whole launch process, giving away product, doing PPC ads, all that kind of stuff. The, it's, it's expensive and it takes a pretty long time to do it. Uh, usually your minimum order quantities are pretty high for um, private label, especially if you're having something manufactured for you. So, you know, your results may vary. I've tried that. I've done that um, 
several times now and some successful and some not so much. Some of them, most of my private label items I make to put in my wholesale bundles. So wholesale is awesome as well. It's very legitimate. It's above board business model. You'll always have invoices to prove where you purchased your items and things. The trouble with wholesale is that a lot of the items are already on Amazon and have a, all the best selling items are on Amazon and they have pretty stiff competition. There's, you know, if you see, um, you know, see somebody pulling up, you know, water bottles or foam rollers or things that are really popular. There's pages and pages and pages of these. And if you're on page five, most of the time you're not going to get any sales. You've got to be able to, in a competitive niche and a competitive product, if you're not on page one, good luck with that. So the problem with wholesale is that um, if you can find it, so can a thousand other of your seller friends, and then everyone's competing for that. The price starts to go down and no one's making any money. So that's really kind of rough. Wholesale bundles has been my favorite business model out of all these things I've tried um, because I can create unique products from wholesale um, suppliers using wholesale companies to prove legitimacy, right? But also combining those with my own private label products or uh, within um, just other wholesale items, highly complimentary items, helping the customer have higher perceived value. They feel like they're getting a deal because they're getting all these things for the one low price and one click. People want it fast, they want it now, they want variety, they want it to be useful and helpful. So that's something that that I've always, I've been doing wholesale bundles for about five years now. I love them. I would never go back to some of the other business models as much as, you know, retail arbitrage was fun for me. I just loved that because it was like this treasure hunt, but I'm not willing to risk my entire Amazon account and business model over a couple of IP claims or a couple of counterfeit claims that I can't prove legitimacy of. It's not worth my whole business. So I'm not, I'm not participating that with that anymore, but I did enjoy it. I really enjoy wholesale bundles because I can create new things. I can create new bundles. Uh, I can find and solve problems for people. And that is my jam. I do that with my bundles. I find problems that people have or a need that needs to be met, you know, supply versus demand. And I give them the products that they need. So I've heard people ask about wholesale bundles and why, you know, it seems like a lot of work. You've got to order, you know, two, you know, things from this company and things from that company and maybe manufacture your own private label product or some sort of private label something, whether it's a recipe card or, you know, a how-to guide that you're putting in with your bundle. That seems like so much work and so much harder than just buying wholesale and making piddly margins, but you're just doing volume. So Walmart is a volume based store. They do not make a lot of money on all the products they sell. They just sell millions and millions of products a day throughout their entire global co company that they have. So I'm too small for that. I can't be a volume based seller. I don't want to buy and sell five to 10,000 units a day of anything. Uh, it's just a lot of work. It's a lot of moving parts and pieces. And if you, honestly, you're not going to survive on Amazon if your margin's 10 cents. If you're Walmart and you can make 10 cents on every product, you're making millions daily. But on Amazon, it doesn't work like that. There's so many price fluctuations. There's so much competition on certain niches, things that fly off the shelf really fast. And there's so much price fluctuations that you, the difference between making money and losing money can literally be um, 10 minutes of your time. It can literally, somebody can change that in a second. A competitor can come in, lower their price by a dollar, and if your margin was 70 cents, they just wiped out your entire profit margin, and now you're losing money in order to compete with them. That is what happens with some of volume sellers or low margin items. I don't want that. I just never wanted that. I saw that at the beginning of wholesale and was like, this is not gonna work. There's no money to be made in some of these things. And people with deeper pockets get bigger discounts on volume-based purchases. I can't compete with that. I don't have $100,000 a day to spend on inventory to move something that's going to make me 10 or 12 cents. Just not worth it. So I choose wholesale bundles because I tried it and it worked. I tried it again and it worked again. So now I've built a custom store of over 200 SKUs. Uh, we keep between 150 and 200 SKUs, um, depending on the seasons and things like that on a regular basis. Don't sell much more than that. And I've seen it work. So I build a bundle and then I build another bundle and I keep seeing it work. It's safe. It's legitimate. 
and it's competition proof. And the way that I teach wholesale bundles is competition proof because you're also adding your own personal private label touch to it, whether that's, like I said, a how-to guide or your own custom packaging, your own branding, whatever it is, and you're creating these custom bundles that people want um, on Amazon and no one can jump on your listing and lower your price and everything else because you're setting yourself apart from the competition. You're selling things that people want to buy because you're doing the research to figure that out. And then you you can also do small test runs. You do not have to start with buying two or three caseloads or hundreds and hundreds of dollars of things to hope it's going to sell. You can buy a minimum order quantity from a wholesale company, put 12 test bundles out there, maybe even six 12 bundles and see how they do. If it's not something that's working for you, you can try it again and you're not risking you're not betting the whole farm trying to figure out how this thing works. It's also, I've been told, told people many, many times, poor man's private label is really what wholesale bundles are. You're losing existing products so you don't have to go through the creation of everything and wait months and months for you know, international manufacturers to give you samples and figure these things out. You're using existing products and building a beautiful bundle of products that are highly complimentary that people want to buy and you're using all that plus adding your own flair to it, whether it's packaging or some other thing that you manufacture, and you're putting it in a bundle. So that is my absolute favorite business model on Amazon. To learn more about that, mommyincome.com slash system to learn about the wholesale business bundle system. We have a 12 step framework, research framework that will help you learn more about how to do the research and how to find the products that are best for you. But no matter what you're doing on Amazon, even if you haven't started yet, just remember the benefits. Remember all of these things. Yes, every business has pros and cons and whatever's right and best for you. But if you're one of those people that are introverted and you don't want to deal with sales stuff, you don't want to be in a service-based business, you're tired of, even if you make $500 an hour, if you don't show up for that hour, you don't make your money. Even, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a service-based business. I do coaching. I do some things like that. But if you don't show up for that hour, you don't get paid. And the, the thing about Amazon is when you start sending products in, you are making money 24 hours a day when your things are selling. It's not passive, don't get me wrong, because I constantly am working in my business to make sure I'm getting new products, checking on my numbers, checking on my listings, optimizing things, updating, all things, things like that. But you don't have to be present 24 seven, seven days a week to be able to make good money on Amazon. You have to be consistent. You have to continually send an inventory that's moving, um, but you don't have to trade dollars for hours. You literally, um, I'm down to, gosh, I wanna say less than 20 hours a week now on my Amazon business um, because we've been doing it so long and we've got a lot of outsourcing. We've hired a lot of help for that. So it's, it's really helpful, but hang in there. You can break that, um, you can break that ceiling that you put on yourself because there is no glass ceiling. There is no limit to how much you can sell, how much you can make, all those things on Amazon. Don't forget the benefits and don't forget why you started or why you want to start in the first place. There was a reason you wanted to do this. If it was to get rich quick, it's no wonder why you're quitting. But the thing is, is that you, there's a reason why you wanted to start this. There's a reason why this was intriguing to you. So if that is still there, don't quit. Don't give up until you know for sure that this is just not something you want long-term. It's not something that you enjoy. It's not something that you can push through the hard things to get done. Um, if you're just you know, thinking about starting out and you don't know exactly what to do, the reality there is that there's going to be some work to do. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, it can be faster if you, depending on how much time you put into it. If you, you know, spend two or three weeks of really learning the process and sending stuff in, it will be faster for you. You can make money on your very first shipment that you send into Amazon, but you have to learn how to do it and you have to learn how to, to you know, the learning curve there. You can't just give up after a month and be like, oh, this, this doesn't work for me. Everybody said it would, but now it's not. So thinking about all those things, don't quit, don't give up. If you need to make a change, great. But if you are just frustrated and overwhelming, there are answers, there is hope, and don't forget the benefits that are offered to you by worldwide audiences, worldwide um, access to customers, the biggest, largest platform on the planet you can have products available for sale on. I mean, if you're selling products, why wouldn't you want to be there? 
So thinking about that. And if you're just not sure, or you haven't tried bundles yet, and you're just on the fence, or you haven't even tried Amazon yet, go to mommyincome.com. And right on the homepage, there's two options. There's a roadmap to your first sale, or there's a roadmap to your first bundle. Either one, choose which one's right for you. It's a free download. You can get a little bit more information, leads you to some blog posts to just figure out what direction is right for you. And if you're still stuck, or you're just stuck right now, um, I'd be happy to, to do a coaching session with you to really figure out what's the best direction for you, mommyincome.com slash coaching. And you can go there and figure out what's best for you. I'd love to be able to help you, but I'm just here to encourage you and let you know to, to don't give up. Don't be frustrated. Don't just stay in that, that overwhelmed zone. Remember your goals. Remember why you started. Remember the benefits and just take that next step. I'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.